Hey, what's up everyone? Real quick, um, I've had some people asking in the comment sections in the past videos what I do to maintain my, my cast iron skillets. And so uh, I just got done cooking breakfast. There's a little bit of eggs and stuff like that in the bottom of the skillet. So what I do is I'll just boil water in the skillet, use a little, um, let's see, a little scrubber like this, a little kind of Brillo pad thing. Get all the food debris out of there, but you know you want to make sure it boils first, so that way it kills off any any um, bacteria or anything like that. But then once it once it boils, you know scrub it out and then dump this out, and then I'll take um, right now I've just got olive oil, but you can use like sunflower oil or anything else. Take a little bit of olive oil, and um, once it's dried, you know from putting this back on the stove after you dump out the water, once it's dried, you put in a little bit of olive oil and just kind of you know, coat the interior and I kind of I kind of go out on the handle a little bit and I do a little bit of the exterior. I got to clean this up as you can see here it's getting kind of dirty. But that's what I do to maintain the cast iron and it's been working well now. I've had this cast iron for four years and um, it just doesn't doesn't show any signs of wear and tear and it works great for baking stuff up. I'm getting ready to bake some cinnamon rolls and um, it just works great. I've, I've, I've really kind of surprised that I haven't that I didn't start using this before just four years ago. I mean, I you can use this over a campfire. You know, you don't have to have a stove. So it's a it's a great thing to have around camp to cook up stuff because you know, like 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 real food makes you feel like a human. And so a lot of people when I first started doing this, they're like, "Well, gosh, what are you eating out there?" I'm like, "Well, I'm not eating shitty. You know, I want to eat good because I've got the time for it." And living this way, you know, you don't have the normal. Um, the, the normal demands of like a house and stuff like that so you got time to spend two or three hours cooking a meal or, or learn how to cook and so learn how to cook with that cast iron skillet in, in the dutch oven you know like how i put the two skillets on top of each other it's been awesome but it's, it's, it's wreaked havoc on my on my waistline but it's all good but anyway just wanted to show what i do to to help um you know keep that cast iron looking good and performing well <laughs> you don't want me to kiss you, do you? You don't want that, do you? Chicken eggs. Can I have them? Alright, babe, hey. Come to the ball? Come here, come here. Come here. Hold on. Come here. Bring it here, pumpkin. You want to play ball? Oh boy. You ready? More? Ready for another one? Let's go. So this happens every time that I winter camp. After about, I don't know, four or five days of running the stove over ground that was, was frozen and covered with, with snow. You know, after four or five days of the stove and the heat from underneath the stove here, the grass starts growing and it's it's pretty cool. I had one year, actually my first winter that I was winter camping over on Mount Antero, I had um, grass grow up and then these little tiny flowers started to grow up too. So it was kind of like my own little garden. So we'll see how, how big this, this grass gets. I'll be here for, I don't know, another couple days, maybe a week. And uh, I'll be kind of interested to see how this this looks when I'm ready to take off. So it's kind of fun having this opening. I mean, I know that it's got its drawbacks with some of the air seepage and stuff like that. But what's nice about it is you've got you've got 
the soil here. You know, I, I've got like gray water here when I was baking coffee. It was just water that I wanted to dump out. So I can just dump it on the soil and it just dries up real easy. So it's kind of nice to have that in the tent. And then having having like this grass is just an extra bonus. So it's kind of cool that, that that's uh, come up. But anyway, I wanted to show you that real quick. Oh yeah, this is nice. Wilderness area, hiking and horse only. I need to spend more time back up in here. Here, here the fishing is incredible. I'm gonna go over the river. Let's go over the river and check it out, babe. Come on. Uh, I wonder if these are soft or hardened. Uh, not falling through yet. Sierra, over here, babe. Hey, come on. Over here. Come on, babe. Over here. What are you doing? You know, they're smelling stuff. Probably smell those dogs from yesterday, don't you? Let's go over here and get some fresh water. My Nalgene bottle is almost out. We'll head to the spot that I went to yesterday and a few days ago in that video. It's just easier to access and I don't feel like falling through the ice on that lip over there. Oh. Oh, there's thorns right there. <clears throat> so cool looking. The ice patterns are awesome and especially when the water goes underneath the ice and you can see it kind of lap up against the underside of the ice there. That's super cool. Man, that's good. Ooh. That was good spring or good uh good snow melt. Sierra, come here. All right, come on, babe, let's keep coming. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that's a mushroom infestation. And I want to say that's Reshi. I don't really know my mushrooms well enough, but I know that there's one that looks almost just like that. And they grow on aspens and they cause like a little tumor like that. <clears throat> and you can take them, make like coffee and stuff like that. Yeah, this trail goes on for another eight miles, but I don't think I'm going to be doing that today. So we're going to turn around. Just wanted to come back in here though real quick and see what the condition of the trail was. It's, it's pretty good. And um, Sierra's having no problem walking through this. Even though it's it's deep on both sides, it's, it's packed down right here, which is good. Because it looks like there's been a bunch of, uh, bunch of other people up here snowshoeing and stuff like that. So, But it's not icy, which is nice. So it's still a rather easy hike, even just in regular regular hiking shoes, which is what I have on right now. <clears throat> Didn't even bring my snow snow boots or or uh, snowshoes. 
but it's nice back in here it's it's cool to see these trails in the winter time because it just everything looks so much different with the snow and uh just with the in inactivity here with not a lot of people around it sure is nice the solitude is just just incredible well, it kind of looks like a storm's coming in it's been gray over there on the horizon pretty much all day but now it's starting to extend up to these clouds there's like a little bit of a you see like the cloud front right there that's creeping over here so i don't know if we're gonna get snow tonight but i know there's some on tap for next week i think it's monday and tuesday of next week supposed to be supposed to be snow both days so hopefully we'll get a lot all right come on babe let's go back to the tent Pretty close, aren't they, babe? All right, so a typical morning includes waking up, doing coffee, and then making breakfast, and then tidying up because everything gets dirty in here. Just, I mean, heck, you just look at something and it gets dirty. And so, <laughs> it's one thing about winter camp is like working with the stove. You know, every time you open it up, you get little particles that come out into the air. And then also too, when I ash the stove, when I uh, when I get all the the ash out from the evening burn, because uh, overnight you know it builds up a lot of ash. All that ash, unless you're real careful with it, a lot of it can get up and go in the air. And like for example, here I just ash the stove. Look at this on top of the stove. Watch this. I'll blow this off. I don't know if you saw all that. That's just on the stove. So imagine what's on everything else. So anyway, gonna do this. Uh, Sierra's outside right now. There were some coyotes that were around, and so they were making a bunch of racket, and Sierra was wanting to listen to them outside. So we're gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna clean up here, just get everything kind of all squared away, and then I'm gonna head over to the hot springs, because I didn't, I don't know what, what was going on last night, but I didn't sleep for a while at all. So I'm pretty tired, my body's kind of wrecked, and so I think hot springs is what the day calls for. All right, we're all packed up, I'm ready to head out. I'm gonna have Sierra just chilling in the back while I'm soaking. And there's some really good hikes over there um, at the hot springs that I can take Sierra on so she can chill for a little bit in here and just kind of relax because I don't think she got much sleep last night either with me being up and down all night and then I can uh, relax in the hot springs it looks like there's a storm coming in across the valley it looks like there's snow so this will be a good day just to go chill and, um, and hang out I don't know what Sierra's looking at back here she's been on the lookout for the coyotes all morning since we heard them yelping but um, they haven't come around since probably, I don't know, 8 o'clock and it's 10.40 right now. So I think they're gone for the day. But uh, what do you say, babe? Should we go to the hot springs? All right, so just got here, and there's there's literally no one here, which is great. And I saw one of my friends work in the front desk, which was cool. So I uh, just took Sierra for a little walk, and I think she wants to go for another one. But this human needs some R&R, so I think first off what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit the showers, and then I'm going to hit the, uh, the hot pools. I'm going to do the pool that's 104 and the pool that's 108. I didn't see anybody sitting in those, which is awesome. So if there's no one there, I'll get video of it. But if there is people in there, I'm not going to take it because most everyone here doesn't wear clothing. And um, I just love the natural setting of this area. It's really cool. So I, I hope that I can record some stuff while I'm in there and show it to y'all. Um, if not, maybe you'll get a chance to visit here one day. So, all right, let's go check it out. All right, so there is literally no one here at the hot springs. It's awesome. I've got the bathhouse all to myself, um, the hot springs themselves. I went and took a look at the pools. There's not a whole lot of people here. 
I think that I saw one person that just got in the pool that's 108 and the pool that's 104, there's no one there. So I'm just planning on parking in the 104 pool all day. Also doing the sauna while I'm here. And it's nice to have these hot springs because you can come and you can get cleaned up and all that stuff. And, and there's tons of minerals in the water that's good for you. You sleep like a baby. This, this hot spring here has a bunch of lithium in the water. So I always sleep like a champ and I'm just chill after I leave one of leave this place. So just planning to, plan to spend pretty much the whole day here and maybe even spend part of the evening here. I've got all my food with me because I brought my fridge. So that's one thing that's nice about, about living out of your vehicle is you always get all your stuff with you. <laughs> so anyway, let's go at the pools. All right, there's no one here at the warm pools. So this is the pool that's 104 right there. And then here's the pool that's 108 right here. And this is the lobster pot for sure, but man, it feels good. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't bring, I gotta figure out where that is. I've got that that back buddy, which is like the cane that you can use to get into your muscles. And it uh, works really well when you're in the hot water. And so, I mean, your muscles are already loose because you're in the hot water, then you can use that and it gets in deeper and really helps to relieve, you know, any sort of tight spots, which I've got a few in my lower back I want to work on while I'm here. So, this is great. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna enjoy this, having it all to myself. This is the first time I've had this hot spring with these two hot pools all to myself and the entire time that I've lived in Colorado, which has been since 1998. So, this, this is, a, this is a, a, a momentous day for me. <laughs> All right, just now leaving the hot spring. It was incredible. Um, ended up the entire day, I was there for five hours and um, had the hot springs to myself, like the really hot pools, for for three of those hours, which was great. Then I did a little um, sauna session, took a nice long hot shower, which was great. And now it looks like there's a storm coming in over the, over the ridge over there. You can see that huge storm front. So I think this is the snowstorm that's coming in for, it's supposed to hit at like, I don't know, like 10 o'clock I think or something like that. So anyway, we're going to jam back to camp and I got to edit up a podcast tonight. So I'm going to do that and then uh, get it posted up and probably continue watching a little bit of Netflix. It's rough out here. 